Good evening, you're watching Primetime News here on TV1. I am Ruhaza Irfan for the News First team, where the people come first. Before we move on to our bulletin, here's a look at your headlines. President's resignation officially announced in Parliament, a new president to be elected on the 20th. SLPP chairman questioned General Secretary on decision to support Ranil for president. Will not participate in election unless one candidate steps forward, says SLFP. SJB parliamentary group unanimously backs Sajid Premadasa to contest for vacant presidency. Anrukumar Disanayaga to contest for presidency. Kanchana introduces app to obtain fuel. Scuffles at fuel queues. Main sponsor. Earn a highest interest rate of 21% for four months fixed deposits. LB Yasaisuru. Starting off with our top story this evening, four parliamentarians have stepped forward to take up the post of president thus far. The Secretary General of Parliament officially informed MPs that there was a vacancy for the presidency today and proceeded to read out the resignation letter of Gotabe Rajapaksa. at 10 this morning under the auspices of the Speaker. The Secretary General of Parliament read out the letter of resignation sent by Gotabe Rajapaksha to the Parliament. As per the letter submitted to you on the 9th of July 2022, listening to the people's mandate and the party leader's decision, I resigned from the presidency of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka on the 14th of July 2022, according to Article 38.1 of the Constitution of Sri Lanka. Therefore, I request you to act according to the Constitution. I serve the country to the best of my abilities and will continue to serve the country even after my resignation. After reading the President's resignation letter, the Secretary General of Parliament informed the MPs of the mechanism through which the new President is elected. Nominations for the Office of President must be received before the completion of seven days. However, the final day for nominations has already been decided as the 19th. In the case of a President's resignation, a new President must be elected by the Parliament through a secret ballot to serve out the remainder of the term within one month of the resignation. The Speaker too is eligible to vote. The General Secretary of Parliament acts as the returning officer. All nominated MPs must be presented in the chamber on the day of acceptance of nominations. As per the provisions of the Special Procedures Act for the election of the President, if more than one member be so proposed and seconded, Parliament shall fix a date and time for the holding of the election. That date should not be later than 48 hours from the time of receiving nominations. Accordingly, as proposed, an election is scheduled to be held on Wednesday the 20th of July following a parliamentary meeting. All MPs must be careful of the suitability of the candidate prior to submitting a nominee for the vacant presidency. Speaking at a press briefing, Chairman of the United National Party expressed the following views regarding Ranil Vikramasinghe contesting for the presidency. It is a secret poll. As a chairman of a political party, I have discussed important matters concerning the deplorable state of the country with several political parties. I am confident that he has the vote of at least 140 members of parliament, if not the blessing of all parliamentarians, and through his experience and knowledge, will be elected president unanimously without any debate for the greater good of the country. I can say one thing with certainty. If he becomes the ninth executive president, he will raise Sri Lanka to a top-level country in Asia and the world. Have no doubt about that. He is a political leader with 50 years of experience. What is the way forward? Four nominations have been brought forward to the parliamentary vote to elect a new president. Acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe, leader of the opposition Sajit Premadasa, Sri Lanka Podujana Perumana parliamentarian Dallas Alaha Peruma, and the leader of the National People's Power Anurakumara Disanayaka. 
the Pohotua is divided. The Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna has been separated into two camps. The party divided when the General Secretary of the Pohotua, Sagar Kari Wasam, announced that the Pohotua will back acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe in the parliamentary vote for the next president. Issuing a statement, the General Secretary announced that the party had decided to support acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe after having discussed at length his capability to ensure law and order. In his statement, the General Secretary of the SLPP added the fact that the party had given extensive thought to presenting a candidate from the party and the impact such a decision would have on the party itself prior to arriving at this decision. The statement went on to say that the SLPP had recognized the fact that Ranil Vikramasinghe was an experienced and mature politician who had the respect and regard of the international community. Less than an hour after the SLPP statement was issued, Chairman of the party, Professor G. L. Pires, informed the media that the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna had nominated their own candidate and that all members of the party should support and vote for that candidate. Professor G. L. Pires went on to direct a letter to the General Secretary of his own party, Sagara Karyawasam. The letter stated that Professor G. L. Pires was appalled by the party's decision to support acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe in the parliamentary vote. The letter also set out six questions directed to General Secretary Sagar Karyawasam from party chairman Professor G. L. Pires, which included the following. Under whose authority did the party arrive at this decision? Who engaged in the discussion to support Ranil Vikramasinghe? What was the basis of this decision? What is the expected location of the candidate meeting, date and time? How is this decision in accordance with the SLPP constitution? The letter also made reference to the fact that Professor Pires demanded immediate responses to each of these questions. Several members of the SLPP also expressed their displeasure towards the decision taken by their very own General Secretary. This is what Pohot to a parliamentarian Madhura Vitanage had to say in this regard. Although this has been claimed to be a decision of the party, it appears to be the decision of the General Secretary. There has been no decision taken as yet in this regard. This appears to be the personal decision of the General Secretary of the party. No decision has been made as yet on this. Additionally, Ranil Vikramasinghe is not a member of the party. He is a leader who has been rejected by the people. Therefore, the SLPP cannot take such a decision without taking all these factors into consideration. The party has yet to arrive at a decision. I have yet to be part of any decision that has been taken in this regard. The party will decide and deliberate and put forward a candidate it feels will be the best person to take the country forward. Parliamentarian Dallas Alha Peruma expressed his intentions to contest for the vacant post of President of Sri Lanka yesterday. In a statement, the MP said the Sri Lankan people are going through a period of transition, adding that he strongly believes that the people of this country should not suffer any more hardship or despair under such a situation. The statement added that he expects the unwavering support of the parliamentarians with the sincere aim of building a peaceful and developed Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party, a member of the ruling Sri Lanka Podujana Piramana Alliance, says their party will refrain from voting unless one candidate is contesting for the presidency. A single candidate within a democratic framework and as per the constitution should be nominated. The candidate should be someone who can explain how they plan to resolve the crisis in the country. If an all-party government is to be formed, it should be in accordance with the constitution. I would like to clearly state that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party will not vote in parliament to appoint a new president if the candidate is unable to provide a solution for the country and its people. We will not vote for any candidate. With several contestants in the fray, many deals involving millions of rupees have come to light. They say they don't have money to import food or other essentials. But how are their funds to pay MPs? This is why we say multiple candidates are not required. Discuss, think of the plight of the people and one person step forward and make a statement to the people and explain how you will run the country. Members of the Samagi Janabalavege extended their unanimous support to the nomination of opposition leader Sajit Premadasa for the post of interim president at a media briefing today.
Gotabe Rajapaksha has fled the country. The people are with Sajit Premadasa. The president of the next government should be Sajit Premadasa. We must establish an all party government in order to fulfill the people's mandate. Parliamentarian Vijita Herat says the leader of the National People's Power, Anurakumarati Sanayaka, will also contest for the post of president. The National People's Power volunteered to contribute to establish an interim government because that is the people's mandate. The public communicated this through civil and mass organizations as well as Daragale. But other parties are not in sync with the people's mandate. This race for president will not unite the parliament. That is why the contribution of the National People's Power is essential in carrying out the people's mandate. Therefore, Anur Kumar Sanayaka has been named as the NPP's candidate for the post of interim president. This nomination has been put in place to take on this challenge to lead this country out of the prevailing economic crisis, bringing together all parties of the parliament as well as civil and mass organizations carrying out the people's mandate for an interim government. <laughs> The protesters at Occupy Golface have given credit to the people of Sri Lanka for forcing Gotabe Rajapaksa to step down. There are preparations in Parliament to appoint Ranil Vikramasinghe as President. The people came together to chase away Gotabe Rajapaksha, who had the mandate of 6.9 million people. We will not let Ranil Vikramasinghe, who does not have a mandate at all, to take the presidency. As members of the struggle, we are not ready to let this country face another downfall. Ranil Vikramasinghe's acts will only bring misery to the country. We do not need a president that was originally brought in by Gotabe Rajapaksha. I urge parliamentarians the decision you make against the people are very serious because if you are coming to the people afterwards you will be rejected. Therefore we urge you to stand with the people. Ranil Vikramasinghe, do not contest in an election because the decision you make is not of use to the country. We need parliament to solve this issue. We inform the people of this country. Since this is similar to an election, pay attention to what your representative does. It is this racist, rotten political culture all of us rejected. Ranil is the leader of that political culture. That is why we are saying that Ranil must be defeated. He is a thug. He is a leader involved in the bond scam. Because of this, he has no right to become president of this country. Meanwhile, the Janata Nade organization stated that the acting president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, should resign immediately. It is not the constitution and regulations that are decisive now, but the public opinion on the ground of what is decisive. If you are thinking that you can deceive the people further, then you are wrong. Ranil Vikramasinghe must leave. He is trying to stick around by playing various tricks. Please resign from both positions and give the speaker the opportunity to continue his work as president. Ranil Vikramasinghe is a person who was rejected by the whole of Sri Lanka, a person who came to the parliament thanks to the national list. He must immediately resign by giving power to the speaker and making way for the appointment of a proper president by the parliament through the speaker. Attorney at law Arthur Ranagala convened a press conference today in Colombo.
Singh Mahatya Pula Pula Jana Mahatya Taki Wata Even though Rani Vikrama Singh has repeatedly told the media that he will act as the acting president from today, those orders are not valid. He is an MP and Prime Minister who violated the constitution from the beginning and now he is going to become the president. The MPs of the SLPP need to understand that the protesters of this country have been fighting for months not to make Rani Vikrama Singh the president for the rest of the president's term. The fast on to death launched yesterday by people at No Deal Gamma demanding the resignation of Ranil Vikramasinghe continues today as well. A fast unto death was launched by the No Deal Gamma protesters opposite Temple Trees Colombo demanding for the immediate resignation of acting president Ranil Vikramasinghe. Ranil Vikramasinghe Vikram Vikram must be removed. He is a failed leader. Therefore, he must resign. Let's not follow a violent path. Let's unite in a peaceful protest together as one nation. We send Gotabe and Mahind home and we will not stop this struggle until we send Ranil Vikramasinghe home as well. Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas arrived at the police hospital today to look into the well-being of the police officers who were injured during the recent protest and unrest. The minister paid close attention to the requirements of the hospital and has ordered the IGP to make necessary arrangements to promptly fill employee vacancies. Main sponsor. Earn the highest interest rate of 21% for four months fixed deposits. LB Yasaisuru. Acting President Ranil Vikramasinghe has decided to start an urgent relief program to provide fuel, gas and essential food items in order to reduce the burden on the people battered by the economic crisis. The Prime Minister's media division announced that this decision was taken during a discussion held today with a group of ministers and members of parliament. It says that it has been decided to allocate additional funds for purposes via the budget which is presented in August. It adds that the acting president had advised to speed up the actions of the food security program and strengthen the process. Attention has also been paid towards providing fuel and fertilizer regularly and in an expeditious manner. Meanwhile, acting president Ranil Vikramasinghe stated during the discussion that the People's Council, which was highlighted in the plan submitted by the peaceful protesters, has been accepted as a good plan. The Prime Minister's media division further stated that the activists of the people's struggle will be forwarded on the steps and measures taken to curb corruption. Gum Madda, a movement born from among the people, continues to deliver much-needed food packages to poverty-stricken families. Over the recent weeks, Gammadha did not just deliver aid to one or two families in a village. Gammadha sent relief package to a plethora of villages, many regional divisions in the country. Today, several villages in Bibila, Munaragala were delivered relief packages by Gammadha. At the same time, a rural village in Kandy called Dalukkulla was also delivered relief packages. Gum Matho was able to bring a smile to these faces and end their hunger thanks to the generous contribution by fellow Sri Lankans. Therefore, the people are the true owners of the happiness that is shared. A new fuel distribution mechanism was announced in Kalama today, an app called the National Fuel Pass was released. A press briefing to educate people about a website which enables them to obtain fuel was held with the participation of Energy Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara, President of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, Mohammed Uwez Mohammed, Chairman of the Information and Communication Technology Agency, Jayanta De Silva, and Managing Director of Lanka IOC, Manoj Gupta. You have to enter your ID number, national ID number, 
if you don't have a national ID number, you can use your passport number. If you don't have a national ID or a passport, you can use a business registration uh, number that has been allocated to you. With that, you can register up to one vehicle. Only one ID card, one passport number or one business registration will allow you to register one vehicle as your uh, using as your vehicle that you'll be using uh, they have six categories motorbikes cars three wheelers vans lorries and buses jeeps suvs and double cabs fall into the category of cars uh, just like how it is categorized in the uh, department of motor traffic uh, and once you do the registration po- process uh, you will have to enter your uh, number plate uh, the the registered vehicle number uh, and also the chassis number uh, that is then that is verified by the department of motor traffic after it is verified you will receive a QR code which can be printed or which can be kept as a screenshot. Uh, this will be the only pass that we will allow for people to uh, purchase fuel, not just from CPC, Cipetco fuel stations, but LIOC as well. But we will announce a day that it will commence from. But once the registration is done, it will take us about three or four days for us to determine what the quota is going to be. Every individual who has a registered number plate ending with zero, one, or two will have Monday and Thursday to purchase fuel from LIOC and CPC. Numbers ending with three, four, or five will have Tuesday and Friday. Numbers ending with six, seven, eight, or nine will have Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, But both these will come into effect only after the registration is completed and once the ministry announces the date for it to be implemented. There will be some challenges. This is not going to be a 100% perfect model to be used, but unfortunately, we have to curtail the use of fuel. A tense situation was reported between a group of health sector employees and the officers of the Katunaika Air Force Base this afternoon. According to our correspondent, the road turning to Chilau from the Kalambo Nigamburu main road was blocked at the Kopara Junction due to the dispute. The heated situation arose near the Sipetko fuel station at the Kopara Junction in Nigambo when fuel was being given to health sector employees this afternoon. Strong opposition was voiced against the issuance of fuel to the staff of the Nigambo District Hospital as it was issued based on the category of the staff member. Area residents who were waiting for fuel for days also joined the queue. Doctors are in air-conditioned cars. We have been in this queue for three days. What is this injustice? They're helping themselves to fuel based on the strength of the circular from the health ministry. According to a correspondent, three health workers from the Nigambo District Hospital were injured in the confrontation that took place. Subsequently, staff members of the hospital engaged in a protest march this evening opposing the incident. The group marched to the filling station from the hospital and returned back. We have been in the queue for three days. Three of us were attacked. We only get 1.5 litres of petrol. I require 2.5 litres for transportation. We are not going on pilgrimages. We need the fuel to report to work. We face this unfortunate incident when trying to get fuel to go to work. Us doctors, nurses and junior staff discussed a mechanism through which the hospital can function. Afterwards, we all agreed to a category. One faction tried to destroy Meanwhile, a doctor belonging to the Dehi Atakandia base hospital is currently being treated after a tense situation intensified at the Dehi Atakandia Madagama Sipetko filling station. A correspondent reported that medical staff of the hospital including the doctors withdrew from duties from 1 p.m. in protest of the incident. They said that only emergency services functioned afterwards. Meanwhile, fuel queues were observed at many places in the island today while several tense situations also arose at a handful of places. Soon after Ranil came into office, the situation did not improve. It got worse. The queues got longer. He is living his presidential dream. These people are suffering without food. A person who does not have the mandate of the people has now become the president. This is shameful. Queues worsened after he came in.
Vegetable prices continue to rise steeply, dealing yet another blow to the average in Sri Lankan household already hit by inflation and the shortage of essential items. News first Navik Shagunasekara filed this report. Sri Lanka is facing a serious fuel shortage and the price of vegetables are soaring as a result. Farmers in Sri Lanka have been unable to access diesel for weeks and due to this, they are unable to transport their crops to the economic centers. Consumers are facing the brunt of the situation. Some consumers say they're finding it difficult to prepare the usual curries to their meals, mainly due to the high cost of vegetables. Vendors like Sumit say that the price of a kilo of carrots, which used to sell for about 250 rupees, is now being sold for 400 rupees. <laughs> As Sri Lanka experiences its worst economic crisis, us Sri Lankans have now found their coping mechanism by cutting down our meals. Those who used to have three meals a day have now cut it down to two meals, and those who used to have three vegetable curries in their usual bath packets have now cut it down to just one vegetable curry. Curry, and that's how we're trying to cope up with this economic crisis. And as the fuel shortage continues in the country, the vegetable traders, like where I'm standing right now, these traders are finding it difficult to sell their vegetables at low prices. And yet again, the consumers have to bear the brunt of the rising prices of vegetables. For the News First team, I'm Navek Shagunasekara. We'll come your way after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Earn a highest interest rate of 21% for four months fixed deposits. LB Yasaisuru. Introducing EVA Heavy Flow Wings with an extended length of 280 mm to provide extra protection on days you need it most. And for the first time in Sri Lanka, an antibacterial layer to minimize microbial growth. EVA leading with confidence. Sapura Galen may Satu the Surakshi the Karani, Islam Insight, Islam Jeeva Jale Jeevite. Welcome back to the news. Notwithstanding the peaceful manner in which the brigadier handled the protest outside the PM's office, Chief Organizer of the SJB Lakshman Kiriala commented on the suspension of the brigadier. <laughs> We witnessed during the last few days that military officers intervened to peacefully control these ten situations, to separate parties involved and to make peace without letting any situation get out of hand or out of control. Actually, such officials are whom we need. However, we know that Brigadier Anil Somavira attempted to make peace by separating the parties that day near the Prime Minister's office. Yet, it has been reported to us that he has been interdicted. It is very clear that what the government wants is not such personnel who strive for peace, but those who will carry out the suppression of the public until the end. Interdicting a military officer shows that it is a long-term program of the government to suppress the aspirations of the people. <laughs> Meanwhile, the army said in a statement that reports claiming that Brigadier Anil Somavira was interdicted are false. The army spokesperson, Brigadier Nilanta Premaratna, said that Brigadier Anil Somavira, who is the 142nd Brigade Commander, was assigned to the Sri Lanka Army Headquarters for a separate duty requirement. Billionaire Chamak Pilahapitiya says Sri Lanka needs to prioritize the growth of the private sector. The Sri Lankan-born Canadian and American venture capitalist commented on the situation in Sri Lanka during a recent podcast. 
There's a level of infighting that I hope this crisis changes. I also think that it's an opportunity for people to reset writ large. Step one, remove most of the executive power from the presidency, make it a true you know, parliamentary style system with an empowered prime minister and empowered elected officials and let the country run and fix itself, You know, deprioritize some defense spending, deprioritize the growth of the public sector, reprioritize the growth of the private sector. I hope they're successful. I would love to invest if given the opportunity under those kinds of market conditions. And I would love to go back at some point. By the way, and this is the most literate country in the world. You have to understand like the people in that country, the human potential in that country is incredible. There are not developing countries like this that have this type of literacy the, and the kindness of the people. These are incredible, hardworking people. But the elected class is some of the most inward, navel-gazing, corrupt people. And this is the opportunity for the young people of that country to wipe the slate clean with all of them. Those views were expressed by billionaire Chamak Palihapitiya. Moving on to more local news, the Chinese embassy in Sri Lanka tweeted that China's financial institutions reached out to Sri Lanka and expressed readiness to find a proper way to handle mature debts related to China. Quoting China's Foreign Affairs Ministry spokesperson, the Chinese embassy tweeted that this measure was taken shortly after the Sri Lankan government announced the suspension of international debt payments. The tweet added that China is ready to work with the relevant countries and international financial institutions to continue to play a positive role in supporting Sri Lanka's response to current difficulties and efforts to ease debt burden and realize sustainable development. A U.S. organization has donated medical supplies worth 908,547 U.S. dollars to Sri Lanka. This is according to a joint media release by the Embassy of Sri Lanka in the United States and Heart to Heart International U.S. The release states that the donation was done made at request the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Washington, led by Ambassador Mahinda Samarasinghe. Moving on to more local news, the Indian High Commissioner had met with Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abewardhana today. According to a tweet by the High Commissioner of India in Sri Lanka, the Indian High Commissioner has appreciated the Parliament's role in upholding democracy and the constitutional framework, especially at this crucial juncture. According to the tweet, India will continue to support of democracy, stability and economic recovery in Sri Lanka. And that's a wrap of primetime news here on TV1. For the News First Team, I am Razi Irfan. And for more of these stories, you can log on to our website, which is www.newsfirst.lk. Thank you for watching. Diseases have plagued villages.